Aloha everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Like the other videos this week, I just want to start off the video by sharing the importance of the Black Lives Matter movement that's currently happening right now. I think it's really important that we keep this message continuing and figure out a way to integrate this movement within our day-to-day -day lives rather than it be a one-week trend. Like my other videos, I will be linking multiple organizations in the description box below that if you have the means to, I would really love if you could donate to. There are community jail bond funds to help with black people, people of color, and protesters to get the legal treatment they need, as well as other organizations that help contribute to the Black Lives Matter movement. I'm also listing multiple black creators below that are some of my favorites that I love to watch that help educate me about the racial tensions that happen in this country. And if you don't have any way to donate, you can share this video because all of the AdSense revenue this week from this video will be donated to community bail funds. I've put more information about it in the description box below, or I've also listed multiple videos below where all of the AdSense revenue goes towards nonprofit organizations. So it's a way that you can help even if you don't have money. I think it's really important to keep talking about this. And I know for me, I feel so much better about integrating this within my regular content to help spread the message in the little way I can rather than staying silent and feeling like I'm not contributing in any way. And yeah, I'm just hoping this is the best way I can go about it. Today's video comes per request of the comment section from my last reaction video that I did to Ricky Thompson. In that video, the AdSense money was also donated to nonprofit. And I specifically asked you guys if you guys could shout out different black creators that I could react to. And you guys came through with so many, so thank you so much for that. But one specifically I saw that I realized I have seen many, many, many times in the past. But I'll admit, I didn't know who she was. Sky Jack. Jackson. And that was up until I looked a little bit more into her and I was like, oh wait, I know who this girl is from Disney Channel. I'm not that old. I don't completely live under a rock, but I'll also say I don't watch any TV or movies like ever. I just don't have time to. So when it comes to just actors and actresses in general, I am just like, I don't know. I don't know shit. And while I have a terrible memory of names and I'm not super familiar with her roles, I am familiar with Sky and her red carpet appearances. And I just think she's such a beautiful, beautiful person inside and out. And I think such an amazing and necessary representation in mainstream media for black girls to see and look up to. And she seems to have already done a lot within her career, which I think is bomb. It definitely makes me feel like I haven't done jack shit. <laughs> so honestly, in that way, she really inspires me too. But yes, in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to Sky Jackson's skincare routine. And let me just say, <laughs> I'm so scared. So this video is from a year ago and I would prefer to do a more recent video, but in reality, I haven't seen anything that she's posted besides makeup tutorials over the course of the last year. And a year ago isn't too long, but the reason why I get really nervous about this video is because the two products that she has in the thumbnail are products that I hate. I hate, 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 hate. The St. Ives Face Scrub and the Thayer's Witch Hazel Toner. And you know what, I'm just gonna save my thoughts for those products when I actually watch the video. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna try to go in with an open mind, try not to have opinions before it already starts. And yeah, just see what I think. So let's get into it. If you don't know me, I am a skincare specialist. That is the official title of my position at the skincare company that I work for. I am not, however, a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever, ever, ever claim to be or know more than either of them. If you have any concerns with your skin, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. Treated. This is all just for fun and information sake. Everything in me right now just wants to be like, okay, Hiram, just go nice, go nice. But in reality, I'm like, <sighs> If a product's shit, it's shit. Nothing I can do about that except share my honest opinion. And because so many of you guys have been requesting this, just a reminder, this is all your fault. <laughs> hey guys, it's Sky. So welcome oh my back God, to my YouTube she looks channel. so little. Uh, today I'm gonna be doing a video that has been highly requested. I okay. How young is she? She looks so young in this video. For some reason, I thought she was way older. Now I'm starting to really feel bad. I haven't even watched the routine yet and I'm already starting to feel bad because of how bad I'm gonna roast it. Honestly, I will just say this right away before anyone comes for me. The fact that at this age, she's already taking care of her skin is miles, light years ahead of where I was at her age because honestly, I didn't even start skincare until I was 18 years old. So regardless of my personal opinions on the products, I'm just happy to see that she's actually trying to prioritize taking care of her skin. So I'll just say that as we get into this. So I'm gonna be doing my skincare routine. <laughs> she's so pretty. This is kind of what I do mainly at night. Um, some of the products here I use at night, but I'm just gonna show you guys what I do. Um, since you guys say I have good skin and I should really yep, drop a skincare skin. routine, here it is for you guys. So if you wanna know how you get nice and glowy skin, uh, Keep watching this video. You know, come to think of it, I think this is the youngest skincare routine I've ever reacted to. That's pretty cool. I'll go easy on you, Sky. Okay, so right now I have no makeup on my face. This is just my skin, nothing on it. Probably just a wow, little bit of Wow, she has really beautiful skin. Mascara. Um, so I have a washcloth, which I'm gonna take. I'm gonna wet it and then good. Good um, wipe my face all over just to make sure everything's off. 
and then I will show you the next product that I'm going to use. So you want to make sure it's hot water when you're doing it. I mean, you can do cold, but hot definitely feels a lot more comfortable. Now I have my wet um, washcloth, and I'm just gonna take this and wipe my face all over. A washcloth's kind of like a exfoliator too, so I love it. And yeah. this is what I yeah, she's not wrong. And I always make sure I like get my edges because you know I I wear edges or gel in the hairline and you just want to make sure it's all cleaned out because if you don't clean it out it's gonna clog your hairline pores and then you could suffer hair loss and that's definitely not what I want. I've never really thought about laying down edges and how that would affect the skin, but yeah, it would definitely clog pores. And instead of me making recommendations for how that would be helpful, I'm going to link multiple black skincare content creators down below. I talked about them in my previous video, the best sunscreens for black people and people of color. And I found some amazing YouTubers through that video. So I'll have them linked below in case they talk about more topics like this, in case you are someone who does struggle with similar skin issues like what she was expressing. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with my St. Ives apricot scrub. Oh. Um, Here we go, right I off the bat. I don't use this every day. I use this okay, maybe okay. once a week. It's not good to use this every day since it does have like little prickly, big balls <laughs> in it. Um, that could end up <laughs> scratching your skin if you uh -huh. do this every day because it is gonna remove a dead layer of skin off. So this uh -huh. is what it looks like. It's just wow. okay. regular, it kinda looks like lotion. Okay, you know what guys? You know this. If you've watched my video about St. Ives, hell, not even if you watch my video about St. Ives, if you've watched any video ever on my channel, you will know how much I just despise St. Ives, partially because of the way that they're marketed, but also because of the way that people use them. My main problem being that I just don't like scrubs in general because a lot of people feel that they can use scrubs every single day. And the St. Ives scrub specifically is made from walnut shards, which are not able to be broken down by water, meaning that the more you scrub your skin, the more you're potentially impaling your skin and causing inflammation, redness, irritation, a lot of issues which is why I never recommend it but I have said one thing on my channel many times I always say that if you are going to use a scrub at maximum use it once per week that's it because I personally consider that to be a safe amount for your skin to be able to properly recover from the scrubbing and also to make sure that you're not over exfoliating your skin by doing it every single day or every other day which in my experience is what people who use St. Ives usually do they're on that everyday scrub game and I'm like girl you need to get off that pronto so be it that I hate that product I'm actually happy to hear that that, especially considering that she she is a teenager making this and usually teens I mean they do have a little bit more resilient skin at least hers would because she's not breaking out all over and they tend to produce you know a lot of excess oil which is where scrubs can kind of be softened and have more layers of dead skin to get through because the skin replenish it I, ju I just realized I'm moving my hands so much because the skin replenishes itself more frequently than when we get older and I'm impressed that she is aware of that at such a young age so honestly I'm not too mad at it so far definitely shocked I was gonna say that um, so I put this all over my skin. Ooh, eesh. okay, a little rough. <laughs> I just rub it, make sure you get it good into your skin. So I do this for about a minute. Not, not too And much. then I'm gonna wash everything off. Now I'm gonna wash it off, I look crazy right now. At least she doesn't get close to her eyes. Sure. I, I can't see. <laughs> Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh. Realistically, if I were to ever use the St. Ives scrub, I would literally apply it like... And then rinse. <laughs> Just because that's how scared I am of inflaming my skin. In my opinion, she's a little rough. I'd recommend that you are more gentle because you also have to take into consideration that when you're rinsing it off, you're going to be re-scrubbing your face again as you get all of it off. So it's going to be double of what you're essentially doing before. So that's why you just want to make sure you're careful. But I also have to be realistic and be like, hire people use scrubs for a reason. They want instant results. If you go like that, you're not going to get instant results. And then I'm going to go in, which I don't do on a daily. I'm going to go in with my Glam Glow Glitter Mask. Um, oh. I just got this. Oh. It's really good on my skin. I have combination skin, but more on the oh, okay. dry side. Um, my dry mm. areas are definitely here, um, mm -hmm. extremely here on my forehead and middle of my eyebrows. Oh, and then it tends to be a little bit oily around my nose. What I'm going to do is um, okay, put cool. this all over my face. It's one of those masks where you put it on and then you wait for it to dry and then you peel it off. So I'm going to do that. So I don't know if they still sell those like models, the glitter models, but I believe this is the purple mask from Glam Glow. Oof, yeah, and looking at the ingredients, yeah, definitely, definitely, 
definitely not a fan of this product. The first two are first polyvinyl alcohol and second denatured alcohol, both of which are very stripping to the skin, can really throw off the hydration factor and potentially wreck the moisture barrier. My skin hates denatured alcohol, like it will freak out, get really red, and I don't have sensitive skin. And the two ingredients are added solely for the effect of peeling it off. And if you guys aren't aware of my opinion on peel off face masks, I just don't think they're good. They tend to be more hype than actually being effective. And part of me is like, well, yeah, people just get it to do it for fun. But the other part of me is like, well, they also have really bad ingredients. So I'm just not a fan of them whatsoever and I would not recommend them. Glam Glow isn't terrible. Some of their masks are good, but this is definitely, I'd say probably their worst mask because it's solely focused on just kind of giving a fun experience rather than actually helping your skin. And that's the troubling thing with ingredients like denatured alcohol. Initially, when you first use them, your skin looks amazing. Like it looks even, smooth, mattified. But the problem is that over time, it can increase dehydration of the skin and overall it's just not necessary to a formula and actually kind of backpedals on the good benefits that a formula will provide. So, you know, I'm just not a fan of it. Get it all in. It's pretty though, I will say that. Ooh, 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 she's getting really close on her under eye area. So now that everything is all on my face, um, I'm just gonna let this dry since this is a peel off mask. Um, usually I let it sit for about 15, almost 20 minutes. Um, if I feel like, cause I'm very, I'm an impatient person, so I feel like <laughs> it's not drying enough, I'm just gonna come and wash it off. The reason why I cringe is because she said that her dry zones were under her eye in the middle of her forehead, and that's exactly where she's applying her mask. And truthfully, you should never apply a mask like this all the way up on your under eye area, because the under eye area is the most sensitive part of the face, it has the thinnest skin. And with her skin already being dry in those areas, the polyvinyl and denatured alcohol is only gonna strip that moisture even more. So I just think you should be careful about where you put that mask. If you are someone who's only used scrubs or you are looking to get off of scrubs, I highly recommend checking out my How to Exfoliate 101 video in the description box below. I talk about the best exfoliating products for your skin types and all of which are much better than the typical scrubs that you find on the market. I think for this mask, it would be better if she actually multi-masked. Just use this in areas that were oily and then in dry areas going in with like a good hydrating mask. One of my favorites being the I'm From Honey mask. I featured this in my favorite mask video. This one is great because after you use it, your skin just feels so plump, so hydrated and it has a crazy high concentration of honey, which is not only going to be be good for moisturizing and plumping the skin because it draws in moisture from the air into your skin, but it's also a great antioxidant and antibacterial agent as well. So just an incredible skincare ingredient. And I'm personally a fan of multi-masking. I rarely will use one mask across my entire face as I'm someone who also has combination skin. In my oily areas, I go in with one mask and in my dry areas, I go in with a different mask. I'm just gonna try to, oh, there we go. I'm gonna peel as much as I can off and then wash the excess off. It looks like, like purple, nasty skin. <laughs> it literally feels like leather is on my skin. Like I have old, crazy <laughs> skin. I feel like I'm doing a TikTok video where I'm yeah, reacting I'm to bad face masks. <laughs> it is, so it'll work. Like I said, I'm just an impatient person. All right, I think that's the most we're gonna get off. So now I'm going to take my cotton balls and some witch hazel. I got this from um, Ooh, okay. Trader Joe's, but you can There's get witch hazel. hazel anywhere. You should order most of my stuff, like from Amazon or just my CVS. Um, supermarket should sell witch hazel, because I mean, Trader Joe's did, so. I just take a cotton ball, put my witch hazel on, and then I clean my face and my neck all over. <laughs> Here's my issue. So witch hazel is an astringent. Denature alcohol is also an astringent. Both work by essentially dissolving all the oil on the surface of your skin, which gives you, you know, that mattified, very even skin look. But witch hazel does have a specific concentration of alcohol within it, which means it is going to dry out your skin at some level. Now for people who have really, really oily skin, witch hazel isn't terrible. Although I wouldn't recommend a product like that, I think what worries me the most about this is that she's going in with a mask where the top two ingredients are stripping alcohols and then she follows up with another astringent after, which is only gonna dry out her skin even more, which very likely could be why she's experiencing dryness in certain areas of her face. This may be too stripping to her skin. If you wanna see someone talk about Witch Hazel in detail, go watch The Golden Prescription or LA Beautyologist as she's known on Twitter. She's a black esthetician that creates amazing videos that are really informative. I'll actually link her video about Witch Hazel in the description box below, but I agree with her points. I just think it's too stripping and not necessary in a routine whatsoever, especially after that mask. Whew. So now after we do that, 
Um, but pretty much finished. The only thing that I use is Wait, shea butter. I don't oh. put any that you would get from Sephora or anything like that. I mean, once in a while, I'll use this, which is a water sleeping oh, okay. mask. Okay, okay. Um, That's something. But I'm trying to go more the natural way. So what I Ooh. use is shea butter. And my mom gets the raw African shea butter oh, wow. and then she boils it down and mixes like a bunch of oils like vitamin E oil oh okay and more I don't even know which one she uses exactly but a little bit goes a long way so I'm just gonna put a little bit and blend it all throughout my face and on my neck and if I need more I need more and you want to make sure you get it all in your face it's kind of a thick mm -hmm. oil shea butter's oil um Oh yeah, it's just like a thick wow, okay. product, so you want to make sure you get it hmm. all throughout your skin. And I'm just going to use a little bit more for my neck. Okay guys, so I think I am pretty much done showing you hmm. guys my skincare routine. Okay, um... I am conflicted. So on one hand, I'm glad to see that the routine is relatively simple. You know, I always celebrate that as a skincare minimalist myself. I definitely appreciate a more minimalistic approach to skincare. That way you're reducing as much sensitivity as possible. I'm really going in with high quality products. I totally thought at first that she said that she just went in with the witch hazel and that was it. And I was about to be like, <sighs> but thankfully she does go in with shea butter. But here are kind of my thoughts when it comes to the shea butter concoction that she makes. Now, she said that she likes to go in with things that are natural. And if you don't know, natural does not mean better in the skincare industry. A lot of times it actually means worse because it means you're getting less research, more risk for irritation and, and more contamination potential. Don't let me lose you. Here's what I mean by that. So shea butter is an amazing ingredient. It's really good for moisturizing the skin, hydrating it. It does provide a seal of moisture over the skin. But shea butter by itself, I don't think is an adequate enough ingredient to serve the functionality of what a moisturizer should provide. A moisturizer is focused on preventing water loss through the face. And I think the amazing things about moisturizers that you can buy at the store is that it's a concoction of so many different incredible ingredients, each of which will offer a plethora of benefits to your skin to make sure that you're completely taken care of. Whenever you use like one single ingredient as a moisturizer, whether it be shea butter or jojoba oil or other things like that, you can only get the benefits of that single ingredient. You're not capitalizing on all the other benefits that would be provided in a standard moisturizer. But if you are someone who has crazy sensitive skin and your skin will react to anything, that is the benefit of using a single ingredient. But what it looks like for Sky is happening is that her mom makes a concoction of different oils mixed together with shea butter. Now I'm sure the oil she used was great. I mean, the awesome thing about the mixture is that shea butter can be really difficult to work into the skin. And so blending it with a bunch of other oils can just make it a lot softer so that it's more easily applied. But here's the thing, when you mix a bunch of ingredients ingredients at home, like DIY, you are risking potential contamination because it's not formulated with preservatives to make sure that bacteria and mold doesn't grow in the formula. And the, oh, sorry, something in my eye. And one of the oils used was vitamin E, which worries me because a lot of people in the natural skincare world think that using vitamin E is an effective preservative for making sure there's not bacteria and mold in a product. I've even seen big brands fall for this myth. And it's not true whatsoever. Vitamin E does not have preservation qualities and you can still have a product be contaminated with it. Now you may be watching thinking, hi, what's the big deal if there's a little mold? It's not that big of a deal. It actually is a big deal. <laughs> when you're applying things on your skin and trying to get it to be absorbed by your skin and there's bacteria in it, you are risking some potential health complications complications. And if you already have underlying health issues, that can be the difference between you just having a skincare routine and ending up in the hospital. Arguably one of the most important steps of making skincare is to make sure that it's protected. And I noticed that she used that much, but it was in this big container that is definitely risking a lot of bacteria growth because she'll be dipping back in, back in, back in, back in. That'll probably last a good, I don't know, six months at least, maybe a year. And with every time she dips back into it, she's reintroducing potential bacteria to grow and thrive in that product, which will not only make the product go bad, but could also put her skin at risk. And this is why I just don't recommend DIY skincare in general. If you want to learn more about this, go watch my video about why DIY face masks are just not good to make. I'll link it in the description box below. But that's why I'm a firm believer in actually develops skincare products because you have a team of people who have studied this stuff for years and years and years who are very educated to developing your formula to be the best it possibly can be, which is going to be way better than just your skills in a kitchen. Let's be honest with ourselves. But that being said, what are my final thoughts on this skincare routine? I think it is okay. 
<laughs> I don't think it's that great personally because I feel like it's a little bit too harsh because of the scrub, the drying face mask, and the witch hazel used afterwards. I'd say the best part of the skincare routine was definitely the moisturizer as it does incorporate some ingredients that I personally love, but I do have concerns with the potential contamination. I do like that she went in with a moisturizer and just didn't leave her skin stripped after all of that because that is a common mistake a lot of teenagers make because they're like, my skin's super oily and I don't want all this gross oil on my skin. And that is not the Lord's way. In reality though, I can't be too harsh. I mean, look at her. She's really young. She has beautiful skin. She's already taking care of her skin. I mean, who the fuck am I to judge? I mean, not that I would ever judge her, just bashing her routine. So that's why I say this routine gets a okay from me. <laughs> if anything, if Sky does see this video, I hope it can inspire her to make a new skincare routine video because I would absolutely love to see. And I'm sure ever since she made that video, because I know you guys in the comment sections were probably roasting her for using those products. Poor thing, but that's just the reality of the internet. Her skincare routine has probably improved a lot since then, and I would love to know what she uses. But what do you guys think of this routine? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know your thoughts. And let me know if there are any amazing TV shows or movies that do feature Sky. I'm Like I said before, I'm just not the type of person to watch that. That stuff unless I know for a fact that it's going to be amazing. Feel free to let me know who I should react to next. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this video and for playing a part in this donation to a Black Lives Matter nonprofit organization. Don't forget to check out the resources below and the creators that I have down there. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.